Good evening. The Secretary General will uh, update you on uh, the working session of the Brussels summit, and then he'll be happy to <coughs> take your questions. Secretary General. Good evening. It's great to see you all. We have just uh, finished uh, uh, a very good uh, uh, meeting uh, NATO summit. Uh, and it was really uh, great to uh, be together and to meet together again in a person uh, as a truly transatlantic uh, family. Or as uh, Prime Minister Johnson said, it was like the first day back at school seeing all your old friends again. And that was really the atmosphere in the room. Today, uh, we open a new chapter for our alliance. We addressed key issues for our security and took far-reaching decisions. We heard a strong message from President Biden on America's commitment to NATO, and an equally strong commitment from other allies in return. All leaders agreed uh, that in an age of global competition, Europe and North America must stand strong together in NATO to defend our values and our interests, especially at a time when authoritarian regimes like Russia and China challenge the rules-based international order. Allies welcomed today's consultations with President Biden um, ahead of his meeting with President Putin in uh, Gen Geneva. Our relationship uh, with Russia is at its lowest point since uh, the Cold War. And Moscow's aggressive actions are a threat to our security. NATO remains uh, committed to our dual track approach of defense and dialogue. We will keep our defenses strong while remaining ready to talk. To make our positions clear, avoid misunderstanding and prevent escalation. We fully support the decision to extend the New START uh, Treaty and we would welcome new strategic talks on future uh, arms control with uh, continued coordination uh, here at NATO. We stand in solidarity with our valued partners, Ukraine and Georgia, and we will continue to support their reforms, bringing them closer to NATO. At the summit today, we addressed China. There is strong convergence of views among allies. Based uh, on our interests, we see opportunities to engage on issues such as arms control and climate change. But China's growing influence and uh, international policies present challenges to alliance security. Leaders agreed that we need to address such challenges together as an alliance, and that we need to engage with China to defend our security interests. We are concerned by China's coercive policies, which stand in contrast to the fundamental values enshrined in the Washington Treaty. China is rapidly expanding its nuclear arsenal with more warheads and a larger number of sophisticated, sophisticated delivery systems. It is opaque in implementing its military modernization. It is cooperating militarily with Russia, including through exercises in the Euro-Atlantic Euro area. We also remain concerned about China's use of disinformation. NATO leaders called on China to uphold its international commitments and to act responsibly in the international system, including in space, cyber, and maritime domains in keeping with its role as a major power. Today, leaders agreed our ambitious NATO 2030 agenda to ensure the Alliance can face the challenges and threats of today and tomorrow. We took concrete decisions in eight key areas. First, we agreed to enhance NATO as the transatlantic forum for consultations and joint action on all matters related to our security and we agreed to strengthen and broaden our political consultation and coordination. Second, we agreed to reinforce our deterrence and defense 
by strengthening NATO as the framework for the defense of the Euro-Atlantic area and recommitting to the defense investment pledge we made in 2014. Third, we agreed to strengthen the resilience of our societies with a new resilience commitment by NATO leaders. We will develop NATO-wide resilience objectives and concrete national goals to safeguard our critical infrastructure. Fourth, we will sharpen our technological edge. Allies have agreed to launch a Defense Innovation Accelerator for the North Atlantic, or DIANA. Working with startups, industry, and universities, this center will promote transatlantic cooperation and help avoid gaps among allies. Allies also agreed to establish a NATO Innovation Fund to invest in startups working on emerging and disruptive technologies. Fifth, we will step up our work to uphold the rules-based international order. To this end, we will strengthen our partnerships with the Asia Pacific, with Australia, Japan, uh, New Zealand, and the Republic of Korea, and seek new relationships with countries across Latin America, Africa, and Asia. We are also committed to the further deepening of our cooperation with the European Union. Sixth, we will substantially step up training and capacity building for partners from Ukraine and Georgia to Iraq and Jordan. Seventh, leaders agreed that for the first time, addressing the security impact of climate change will be an important task for NATO. This will include regular assessments of the impact of climate change on our installations, missions, and other activities, integrating climate change into our exercises, defense planning, and procurement, and developing a methodology for assessing greenhouse gas emissions from military activities. I am pleased to announce that uh, all allies made a clear commitment to significantly reduce military emissions. We also agreed to set concrete targets for NATO to contribute to the goal of uh, net zero emissions by 2050. I also want to thank um, uh, Prime Minister uh, Justin Trudeau and Canada for offering to host a new NATO Center of Excellence on climate and security. Finally, we agreed uh, to develop NATO's next strategic concept in time for our summit in 2022, reaffirming our values and reflecting the significant changes in our security environment over the past decade. The NATO 2030 agenda sets a higher level of ambition, and it provides a clear direction for the future adaptation of our alliance. Allies agreed that these decisions must be underpinned by the right resources through national defense expenditure and NATO common funding. This will be the seventh consecutive year of growing defense spending across European allies and Canada, with over 260 billion US dollars extra on defense since 2014. Allies are also investing in new capabilities and contributing to NATO missions and operations. All of this means fairer burden sharing across the alliance. And we must maintain this momentum. To do more together, allies agreed that we also need to invest more together in NATO. To resource our requirements in a more challenging security environment. This will require increased resources across all three NATO budgets, military, civil, and infrastructure. For instance, to support more joint training and exercises, command and control, stronger cyber defenses, pre-positioned equipment, better infrastructure, and more capacity building for our partners. So, by agreeing the NATO 2030 agenda, leaders have taken decisions to make our alliance stronger and better fit for the future. 
We also took decisions on our newest operational domains, cyber and space. Allies agreed uh, a new cyber defense policy for NATO. It recognizes that cyberspace is, a con is contested at all times and ensures that we have strong technical capabilities, political consultations and military planning in place to keep our system, uh, systems secure. We also made clear that NATO is determined to defend itself in space as effectively as we do in all other domains, land, sea, air and cyber. And I thank Luxembourg for funding uh, a strategic space situation awareness system here at NATO headquarters. We also addressed Afghanistan. After almost 20 years, uh, NATO military operations are coming to an end. We pay tribute to all those who have lost their lives or been wounded and express our appreciation to all those who have served under the NATO flag. NATO leaders reaffirmed their commitment to continue to stand with Afghanistan, with training and financial support for Afghan forces and institutions, and funding to ensure the continued functioning of the international uh, airport. So we have made important decisions today to make NATO stronger in a more competitive world and chart a course for our alliance over the next decade and beyond. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions. Okay, we'll start with Reuters in the middle. Thank you, Juana. Uh, Secretary General, on two different points, you mentioned uh, common funding. You've often talked about your ambitions. Can you just clarify, is there now an increase in joint funding for military operations? And on a completely different subject, on Afghanistan, was there an agreement today that one nation should take charge of the Kabul airport? And was that Turkey? Thank you. Well, so the original proposal uh, was to uh, uh, only strengthen the, uh, the military budget. Uh, the decision today is to increase uh, and strengthen all three of them. Because there are three common funded budgets in NATO. It's a civil, the civilian budget, the civil budget. Then there is the, the infrastructure budget, and then the, we have the military budget. And uh, and uh, you can. Uh, and now the decision is to uh, to to also across all the three budgets that we need uh, to meet our high level of ambition, uh, and that we need additional funding uh, to make sure that we uh, resource fully the higher level of ambition we have uh, agreed. Um, uh, so this then applies for all three budgets, um, including activities as higher readiness, more exercises, more training, better command and control, more investments in infrastructure, pre-positioned equipment, but also, for instance, uh, uh, over the civil budget to work with partners uh, and, uh, and also provide uh, support to partners in other ways. So, so this is a this, this reflects the entirety of the NATO 2030 agenda. And of course, the, the important thing is that we have agreed how we should strengthen and adapt the alliance by doing more together. But if we're going to do more together, we also need more uh, investments together. And therefore, I welcome uh, that uh, uh, today we agree on all three budget, uh, budgets, not only uh, the military budget, which was the original uh, proposal. Uh, sorry, there was another on Afghanistan. Well, we are working uh, with uh, so NATO and allies are now working on uh, 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 how to ensure uh, uh, the continued operation of an international airport uh, uh, in Kabul. Uh, uh, there were meetings uh, also on the sidelines of the summit today. Um, uh, Turkey, of course, plays a key role in those uh, efforts. Uh, and we, we, we have not... Uh, we are, not, we, are, we are working on exactly how to do it, but it's a strong commitment from NATO uh, and from NATO allies to uh, ensure that we can continue to operate an international airport. That is important for, for NATO, uh, for our continued civilian presence, but it's important for the whole international community. And that's the reason why we really make an effort to do so. Okay, we'll go to the end over there, to DPA. Uh, Secretary General, um, 
in the communique, NATO states uh, that it would like to maintain a constructive dialogue with China uh, where possible. Um, what are you going to do to have this dialogue? Could it be an option um, to propose China, a NATO China Council or something like this? Thank you. So first of all, we have a dialogue and contact with China uh, today uh, on the military level, uh, uh, also on the diplomatic and political level. I met the Chinese foreign minister uh, not so long time ago. So, so we have different way of, of, of maintaining dialogue uh, with uh, uh, China. Uh, and of, uh, and uh, for instance, on issues uh, uh, like arms control, but also uh, the situation in Afghanistan uh, on the border of China, uh, of course, uh, they, these are issues where uh, we have uh, common interests to, to look into how we can can uh, strengthen our uh, engagement and, uh, and our dialogue. I think what you have to realize is that NATO has come a long way. Um, uh, the first time we mention China in a uh, communique, in a document, in decision from NATO leaders was 18 mon months ago at the summit in London. Before that, we didn't have any language at all. In the current strategic uh, uh, concept, China is not mentioned with, with a single word. Now we can read the communique, and you see that we have seen a, a convergence of views among allies, uh, where we, uh, of course, uh, again address uh, uh, the importance of engaging. Uh, China is not an adversary, but also address uh, the challenges, uh, the, the in, uh, investments in new modern capabilities, nuclear warheads, uh, the coercive uh, behavior, uh, and uh, also the challenges it poses to international rules-based order and uh, uh, to our uh, uh, security. So, so, so if you compare those documents, you see that we have come a long way to develop a common position uh, on uh, uh, China and what it means for our security. If I can add one more thing. This is very much about what we do at home. And this is about taking care of a core responsibility to be able to protect and defend all allies against any threat from any direction. Uh, because we know that we see that China is coming closer to us in cyberspace. We see them in Africa, we see them in the Arctic, we see them uh, trying to control our infrastructure. We had the discussion about 5G. And therefore, what we do in NATO 2030 is highly relevant also for how to address uh, uh, China uh, with more resilience, with more technology, uh, and uh, all the things we're now going to do together. Okay, we'll try to take three questions over there to simplify life for our colleagues with the microphone. We'll start with Washington Post in the second row, please. Michael, put up your hand, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Michael Birnbaum from the Washington Post. Thanks very much for this. Um, I, can I just ask, um, can you compare your experience at this summit uh, with the U.S. delegation to um, your experience uh, with at, at summits with President Trump um, and was President Biden able to tell you anything that convinced you that Trump or another Trump-like figure won't be back in the White House in a few years and swing the United States back to a more confrontational approach to NATO? Thank you. It is different. Um, then I think that the important thing for me now is to convey a very clear message that was also conveyed in the meeting today that all allies welcome the strong commitment from President Biden to NATO and the bond between Europe and North America in NATO. And that in return, all uh, the other allies, Canada and Europe, uh, express the same strong commitment that we have to stand together uh, in uh, NATO in a more competitive world. That's the important thing. I welcome that. That was the message from President Biden when I met him in the White House a week ago, and that's... Uh, uh, the message from President Biden and his administration today in the summit. Then I would like to add the following, and that is that I think what we learned over the previous four years was the importance of strong multilateral institutions in uncertain times. Because NATO as an alliance, as an, as a, as an institution, goes beyond individual political leaders. We can, weather, we can weather political uh, winds and different uh, storms. Uh, so if anything, it just proves the importance of building a strong NATO. Uh, there will be uh, different political leaders elected in many allied countries in the years to follow. 
But I'm confident that as long as we realize that it is in our security interest to stand together, national security interest to stand together, we will maintain NATO as the bedrock for our security. Um, and uh, and uh, also welcome the fact that uh, we have very strong bipartisan support in the United States for NATO. Uh, but if you look at the recent opinion polls uh, uh, published from different sources over the last weeks, it, re it confirms a very strong support for NATO in general, both in North America and in Europe. So, so uh, I cannot tell you who will be the next political leaders in 30 NATO allied countries, but I can tell you that what we have seen is the, is the strength of strong uh, institutions like NATO, uh, which can deal with also uh, different political uh, di different political leaders uh, that have different opinions about uh, uh, many issues, as we have seen over many years in NATO. ZDF, just behind Washington Post. Thanks. Elmar Tevison, ZDF German TV. Secretary General, you pointed out several times, of course, the words coercive policies with regards to China. It's in the communique as well. So using harsher words than the G7 summit, and I wonder why is that? Uh, is there a different assessment? And number two, are the what are the lines that China would need to cross in order to be upgraded from a systemic challenge to a, an adversary or a threat? It's not for, so, uh, what, what, what matters for me is that we have a united uh, and clear position uh, among 30 allies on China. And, uh, and as I said, this is to go a long way for NATO, because not many months ago we didn't address that at all. Uh, and as always, when 30 allies have to agree, we need to to balance, we need to, to, to address also some differences. The, 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 that's, that's a natural thing. But the strength of NATO is that, well, there are some differences. We sit together, we, we work on the issues, and we come out with strong, unified, clear messages, as we have done now. Uh, so it's not for me uh, to... Uh, I will comment on the NATO uh, statements. Uh, I, I think they are clear and strong. Uh, we, we, are, we are not in the business of, of defining exact lines, but, but we are just uh, addressing together the fact that China is soon uh, the biggest economy in the world. They already had, have the biggest, uh, uh, the, oh, sorry, the second uh, 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 biggest defense budget, and all the, the biggest navy. And they are investing heavily in new modern capabilities, including by investing in new disruptive technologies such as autonomous systems, facial recognition, uh, and artificial intelligence, and, 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 and uh, putting them into different weapon systems that are really in the process of changing the nature of warfare in a way we have, we have hardly seen before, uh, or perhaps ever seen before. And this matters for our security. There's no way uh, 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 to deny that. So the question is, how do we address it, not whether uh, or if we're going to address it. Okay, we'll go to Interfax Ukraine. Thank you, Anna. Uh, Secretary General, Ukrainian leadership has quite high expectation regarding membership action plan. But as far as uh, I see from the summit communique, we are not there yet. After this summit, what will be your main message for Ukrainian leaders and for Ukrainian people? Thank you. My main message is that NATO stands in solidarity with Ukraine. Uh, we provide a strong political support to the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine. Uh, we provide practical support. Uh, we are stepping up our practical support, uh, both within the NATO uh, um, um, so context, but also bilaterally uh, uh, from different NATO allies. I had the bilateral meeting, for instance, with President Justin Trudeau of Canada. And of course, Canada is one of many allies who are providing bilateral support to Ukraine. Uh, um, and, and in the uh, communique, in the decisions we have taken today, we have reiterated our decisions on uh, that NATO's door is open, um, uh, uh, on uh, uh, the decisions we made back in the, at the Bucharest summit in 2008. Uh, and uh, also that we will step up uh, and that we will do uh, more to help uh, Ukraine and also Georgia as another aspirant country to uh, focus on reforms 
that will move them closer to uh, NATO and to Euro-Atlantic uh, integration. Okay, we'll go to CBC. Secretary General Murray Brewster with CBC. Thank you for taking the question. Following on what was asked uh, about Ukraine and the membership action plan, do you actually ever foresee any circumstances under which Russia would allow Ukraine to join NATO uncontested? And separately, I wanted to ask whether or not there was unanimity among allies that China itself is a security threat. Um, I think it's extremely important to underline that uh, the question, every nation has the right to choose its own path. And, um, and uh, that includes also what kind of security arrangements it wants to be part of, uh, including whether it wants to be part of a member of NATO or not. So uh, the message is that uh, it is for Ukraine and the 30 allies to decide when uh, Ukraine can become uh, a NATO member. To, uh, Russia, of course, have no say uh, because they, they, don't, they, they cannot veto what uh, neighbors can do. Uh, uh, we will not return to an age where we had spheres of influence, where big powers decided what small neighbors could do. And I all very often use my own country, Norway, as an example. Norway is a, a, a small country uh, bordering uh, Russia. Uh, of course, Russia, the Soviet Union, disliked that we joined NATO back in 49, 1949. Uh, but, but since allies at that time were so strongly in favor of accepting also small neighbors of Russia into the alliance, uh, of course, Norway was accepted as the Baltic countries or as Montenegro and uh, and North Macedonia recently. So, um, so this is about fundamental principles of accepting the right of every nation to decide. So it's for the 30 allies and Ukraine to decide when uh, Ukraine is ready for a membership. Well, you can see uh, the language we have agreed uh, and, and we address that uh, China's behavior, the co coercive behavior, uh, the, 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 the uh, uh, investments in new military capabilities, including nuclear systems, um, uh, 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 and also uh, uh, what they do regarding uh, international rules-based order. All of that um, uh, uh, poses challenges to our security. And that's the reason why we uh, have uh, the language we have uh, in, the, in the statement and the clear message uh, in the communique. But I will also say that's the reason why we take the concrete decisions in the NATO 2030 agenda. Because again, <laughs> This is partly, for instance, about making sure that we keep the technological edge. Uh, so when we establish the technology accelerator, it is about making sure that we keep the technological edge in a world where China is investing heavily in these new uh, modern technologies. Uh, when we are concerned about uh, Chinese control over critical infrastructure, 5G uh, airports, uh, many other uh, critical infrastructures, uh, so when we strengthen our uh, resilience on developing um, resilience targets and, uh, and national goals, that's also about protecting against any uh, challenge to our resilience, but uh, including also potential challenges uh, from uh, China. Or when you do more both on cyber, on space, is also uh, something which is relevant for the challenges we see stemming from uh, China. Lastly, when we have uh, agreed to work more closely with, uh, for instance, uh, uh, Australia, uh, Japan, the Asia-Pacific countries, that's also about, of course, how to respond to a, 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 a more assertive China. Okay, we'll go to Imedi in the first, second row, rather. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary General. Uh, you have s spoken and mentioned uh, uh, open door policy and uh, future enlargement of uh, organization. After discussion with NATO leaders, can you tell us more about uh, future membership of Georgia and what is the biggest stumbling block for Georgia's accession? Because the main question now is in Georgia is why is Georgia still not in NATO? Thank you very much. Um, the message is very much the same uh, as I, I just uh, conveyed about uh, uh, Ukraine. And that is that NATO allies stand in solidarity with Georgia. Uh, we provide political support, practical support, 
uh, uh, we will never uh, accept um, uh, that the parts of Georgia are not under uh, Georgian control, Abkhazia and South Ossetia. And we are uh, stepping up our practical support for Georgia, uh, including uh, with uh, the training center um, outside Tbilisi and in uh, other uh, ways. And allies are committed to uh, provide support uh, and uh, to also uh, make it very clear that uh, uh, Georgia is a highly valued partner, uh, not least in the Black Sea region, uh, and we will continue to provide practical support. Then it is for the 30 allies uh, uh, and uh, Georgia to decide when the time is right. Uh, we need consensus in, in this alliance to, to make these decisions. Uh, so I cannot give you a date, but I can uh, say that we will continue to support the reform efforts uh, which are uh, moving Georgia closer to NATO. Okay, we've got Politico over there. Thank you, David Herson with Politico. Uh, Secretary General, could we go back to, to China for just a second and uh, wonder if you addressed with the leaders a concern we hear maybe from some allies that one of the reasons China hasn't appeared in communiques all that often is that the alliance has not yet given itself the legal authority under the Washington Treaty to operate outside the North Atlantic space. And do you envision the necessity for treaty change? And should this be a notice that, in fact, NATO is prepared now to operate anywhere in the world outside the North Atlantic space if it perceives a threat? So first of all, we operate outside uh, NATO territory. We have done that since uh, the end of the Cold War. And that, this was a discussion back in the early 90s. That's correct. Someone said that either NATO has to go out of business or out of area. And then we helped, uh, uh, and then we actually went out, out of area. We went into Bosnia and Herzegovina and helped to end uh, a brutal, bloody war there. And a few years after, we went into, also we, uh, we, 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 we helped to end the uh, the, the atrocities and the fighting in, 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 in Kosovo. Uh, and then after 9-11 attacks, uh, since then we have been at the forefront uh, fighting uh, international terrorism and we have had a big military operation in Afghanistan on the borders of China. So this idea that it's something completely new, that NATO is going out of area, is very strange because we've been out of area for decades. But then back to my main message, to respond to the challenges we see that China poses to our security is not about moving NATO to Asia. It's about very much about what you do at home. Resilience, technology, cyber defense. Because we see that China is coming closer to us. There is no need for any change in the NATO treaty to respond to that. Actually, NATO is going to do exactly the same as we've done for more than 70 years to protect and defend all allies against any potential threat. But the threats and challenges have changed. So the way we do it, of course, changes. We, we, we assess that instability in the Balkans was a threat to us. In one way, it was simpler during the Cold War, because then we had one enemy or one threat, and that was the Soviet Union. Uh, but since then, the world has become a bit more complicated. And the strength of NATO is that we have been able to adapt and respond to a more complicated world. Uh, and we will continue to do that. And NATO 2030 is exactly about how to be loyal to our core tasks, defend and protect all allies, but in a changing world. And as I said, uh, this is very much about uh, things you are doing at home uh, uh, to make sure that when we see China coming closer to us in cyber, uh, controlling infrastructure in, in Africa and Arctic, training together with Russia in North Atlantic waters. Of course, it matters for NATO. Okay, we'll get to Spiegel over here. Um, Markus Becker with the Spiegel. Um, Mr. Secretary General, looking at uh, the list of challenges from China, you have mentioned uh, an outside observer might be hard pressed not to, to not to see an adversary in China. At the same time, uh, a number of allies are strongly economically connected uh, to China, Germany uh, among them. Um, to which extent does, do these uh, economic bonds uh, hamper steps that might need to be taken to counter security challenges from China? So first of all, I think it is important to understand that we need to address the challenges that uh, uh, the rise of China uh, 
uh, poses of security, uh, even though many allies have a lot of economic ties with China. Uh, and in one way, that's what we also express in the communique today. Um, so it's not either or. It's not like you either do nothing and trade, or you do a lot or, or are not able to trade. Uh, that's, the world is not that simple. Um, uh, so I think that what is important today is that, of course, individual NATO allies have addressed uh, both the opportunities and the challenges related to the rights of China for many years. The new thing we have seen today is that we strongly agree that we should do this together as an alliance. Because we understand that we need to stand together. Uh, China soon having the biggest economy in the world. Uh, even, even, even the United States, which it used to be the biggest in almost all domains, they realize very clearly that uh, when it comes to China, it is a huge advantage for the United States to have 29 friends and allies. So, um, so I, I just think that uh, uh, we could strengthen our cyber defenses. We can make sure that we uh, don't uh, have vulnerable 5G systems. Uh, we can make sure that we uh, invest in advanced technologies. We can work on arms control with China and continue to trade with them. Um, so uh, for me, that's not either or. It's actually to combine but stand together uh, because that makes it all stronger. Uh, Agencia Nova, lady in the second row. Thank you. Uh, Giulia Torbidoni, Agenzia Nova, Italian News Agency. Um, Mr. Secretary General, I want to ask you if you have talked about uh, the Southern Front, uh, so the Mediterranean region, and uh, a second question about uh, Afghanistan and NATO 2030. I want to ask you if, um, uh, what, what of your uh, presence in Afghanistan are you going to bring with you in the future of um, the future of NATO? And what, uh, on the other front, uh, is not so positive and uh, is time to um, upgrade or uh, to remove from the toolbox of NATO? Thank you. Um, first, the Mediterranean and the South. Uh, yes, that was discussed and addressed during our uh, meeting. Uh, NATO has to be able to respond to threats and challenges from all directions. Um, so we are in Iraq, uh, uh, which is part of our efforts to prevent ISIS from returning. Uh, we are increasing our training mission there. Uh, we strongly believe that uh, prevention is better than intervention. So we believe that the best way of stabilizing our neighborhood is to train and build local capacity. We also work with our uh, Mediterranean partners. Uh, we are looking into, uh, we have a partnership also with Mauritania. We're looking into whether we can step up and do more uh, uh, with them also in the uh, um, Sahel region. Uh, but these are th uh, issues which, not, which are now discussed among allies and also with Mauritania. Uh, and uh, yeah, several allies, of course, are extremely concerned about the situation in Northern Africa, including uh, Libya. Um, on Afghanistan, um, we are ending the rest of the support mission. Uh, but we will continue to provide support to the Afghans in f at least four ways. First, we'll fund the Afghan security forces. When we came to Afghanistan almost two decades ago, there were hardly any Afghan security forces at all. Now there is an Afghan security force of roughly 3,000 personnel. Uh, we, all allies, have promised to continue to fund them. That's critical. Second, uh, we are working on how to organize out-of-country uh, training of the Afghan uh, security forces, especially the special operation forces. Uh, thirdly, uh, we are um, uh, um, we have decided to continue civilian presence presence in 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 Afghanistan to provide advice capacity building, um, and 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 fourth, uh, we will uh, really work hard to maintain critical infrastructure such as the airport uh, to enable both the presence of uh, NATO, also civilian presence of NATO, uh, but also of course uh, presence of the broader international community. Uh, diplomatic presence, but also, of course, the development aid uh, community. So these are four important ways where we uh, will continue to provide support.
Thank you very much. I know there are uh, more questions, but we'll have to wrap this here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice evening. <laughs>